Hi, welcome to Kratos BI. My name is Chris Wagner, and today we're going to be talking about analytics organization structures. Before we get into any of that, make sure that you like, subscribe, and maybe even turn on that alarm bell to this channel. Get you notified every time I publish new content. All right, let's head over to it. Okay, before we talk about the, the organization structure of your analytics teams, I want to talk about the different roles that are going to be on these teams, all right? There's going to be a solution lead. The solution lead is broadly responsible for all of the team members, uh, ensuring that they've got all the functionality tools that they need at their disposal, that they, he has or she has a broad understanding of the work that's being done and how this is being done. Uh, th they'll work hand in hand with the senior engineer and the the individual engineers to make sure that they're delivering on the right content and they're working in a direction that that's going to be cohesive as an, as a team. All right. Senior engineer is going to be uh, work is the next position. That individual will work very closely with the solution lead. Those two will very much oftentimes partner on more technical large solutions. Uh, those, those members will also divide and conquer when they're trying to work through lots of different solutions. So that senior engineer is going to be someone who has been working in the field for a long time, uh, not necessarily as experienced as that solution lead. Uh, that senior engineer will will be trusted to be able to work independently and work without a lot of direction from that solution lead except for in more niche niche solutions and, and brand new issues right and then we get to uh the engineering role the engineer is going to be the ones who's going to be doing the bulk of the working these are going to be people that may be relatively fresh out of school or maybe offshore or may have been working in the field for just a handful of years, uh, or people who just like being engineers and don't want to get into any of the more senior or management type stuff, they're happy just doing that work, right? So that's gonna be your engineers, right? When we talk about team structures, everyone in this structure will basically report to that solution lead, uh, and then you'll have that senior engineer. What this does is it enables the senior engineer and solution leads to be able to swap in and out uh, for vacations or sick time. It also allows us, those, those two leaders on this team to be able to work on a, you know, a one to two ratio with the engineers that are on the team. Now you can blow this out. You can have more engineers that work inside this organization. Uh, it all depends on the ratios that you have is how senior or how much experience these engineers have. If you're building out a team with a lot of people who are right out of college or a lot of people who are working offshore and don't necessarily work the same hours as your business, you're going to have to keep this ratio low, right? So when you're offshore engineers or when you're engineers who don't have a lot of experience, are, are functioning and working and coding, uh, the solution lead, the, the senior engineer could spend a lot more time working with the business, working to ensure that the solution is going to meet their needs, and then relaying that information back to those individual engineers, right? Uh, this structure is highly effective. It's one that I really like. As a, as a team grows and matures, you can increase the number of engineers that report up to the solution uh, lead or senior engineer. Uh, it's all a, a maturity thing that you, you, you have to really kind of judge out and understand, understand inside your organization. The next is a pod team. Now a pod team is, is, com is a combination of all of the skill sets and team members necessary to deliver on the features that an agile team is or a business is looking for, right? So uh, I'm gonna, I've identified six different positions here that are, are key inside of a pod team. Your organization and your solution may have more, you may have less. It all kind of depends uh, upon the work that you're doing in your company. I'm gonna run through these so that you can understand what, what each of these roles are at a high level. Uh, look for more videos on the, each of these 
individual roles and how you can get started them later. So there's data engineering. Data engineers are responsible for managing all of the data that comes into your environment, making sure that it balances, it loads, it, you know, uh, that it has high quality. They're the ones who are responsible basically for that enterprise data warehouse. Your BI engineer is the ones who are responsible for taking that information and loading it into analysis services and presenting it out through Power BI. Uh, but this position will work very closely with the data engineers, making sure that the information that's coming in is in a format that is you know, directly and easily accessible and usable by that analytics team. They'll work closely with the business uh, to ensure that the reports, the dashboards, the content that's being uh, put out is actionable and usable. Next data quality or the quality engineer, they're the team that's responsible to ensure that the information that's coming out is of high quality, that the numbers that are coming out match, match up with what the business is looking for. Uh, frankly, this is one area that many businesses underfund and it's really a shame because it a little bit of quality engineering radically improves the information that flows to the system, ensures that the information that you're making is right, ensures that the work that the data engineering and the BI engineering team are, are, are doing accurately reflects the information that, that is inside the business. Now your company may ask your data engineer, your BI team uh, to do that work themselves. Highly recommend when and where you can invest in that quality engineering stack. It is really worth it. Next, your business analyst. Business analyst works uh, hand in hand with the business team, making sure that they understand all of the, thing, the things that the business is working on or looking for, and uh, all ensures that that's translated so that the technology team, so as data engineers and BI engineers, quality engineers can work and are delivering those appropriate results. Uh, then there's the cloud engineer, works to make sure that the infrastructure is up, that it's secure, it's accessible, it's scalable, it's performant. Um, this has been something that previously, before there was cloud engineering, this was the old infrastructure engineer guys. Well, now that we have cloud engineering where things are much more scalable, they're out in the cloud, so uh, in many ways they're more secure, but only more secure if you actually pay attention to it. These are the guys who pay attention to it. You need to have cloud engineers on your team working to help you out. And then the last member of the pod team is that product owner. The product owner is the one who's responsible for delivering the business results that deliver the ROI necessary to, to do this work that justifies why do we do these different things, right? Uh, the product owner is incredibly important as a liaison to the business and to technology. Uh, very much they serve a role that, that with the business analysts, they work very hand in hand in that position, uh, making sure that business analysts is delivering the things that are most valuable to the company uh, and keeping the entire team on track and focused. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. I hope that you found this inf informative and useful to you. You may not work in a large enough organization where you have all these different roles. You may find that you wear many of these hats. That's okay. Hopefully, un understanding these different breakouts can help you ensure that you're switching hats often enough or uh, that you're keeping your skill set diverse enough. Uh, again, thank you for tuning in. If you like this content, hit that like button, hit subscribe. Uh, turn that alarm. If you're one of, if you have subscribed, you leave a comment and have liked the video. Uh, when I hit a thousand subscribers, I'm going to be doing uh, uh, a drawing for not one, not two, but three uh, Data God T-shirts. I'm going to be giving away free. Uh, if you, if you're like, hey, I really want to get myself one of those great looking Data God shirts. I don't care about your drawing. I want to support the channel. There's a merchandise link down below. Go ahead, click on that. Uh, if you just want to support the channel, head over to KrailsBI.com, uh, buy me a coffee or two or five or a thousand. You can't buy a thousand, but you know, um, <laughs> I'll send you a nice thank you letter. Uh, I'll include some of these great Power BI, uh, I love Power BI stickers that I've made as a way of saying thank you for all your support. 
And as always, uh, you guys, uh, thank you for everything. Peace.